Good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildon Hall and Districts and today is episode 5 of Susanna's Come Build With Me. Um, before we get on to that, I just wanted to say um, thank you to everybody um, who's contacted me recently um, just to see how I'm doing. Um, because it's been a little while since I've been on YouTube, um, not for any particular reason, to be honest. It's just that I've been really cracking on. As you can see, I'm back in my usual spot. On the other side of this camera is where everything's completely changed. But that's not sub the subject of today's video. But I just wanted to thank all of those people who contacted me just to see how I'm doing. And so, basically, I'm still knocking about and alive and kicking. So um, thank you for asking and I hope you enjoy today's video. And today's video is Susanna's Come Build With Me, episode five. And today um, we're gonna be building an engine shed or a VMF, which is a vehicle maintenance facility. That's what they tend to call them nowadays. Um, the reason for this is as my layout has changed somewhat and changed quite substantially. The way of operating it has changed and therefore um, a few other kind of things have been needed for the layout in order to make the whole process work. Um, the only way to explain that is to really show you the layout, but that will take some time. So that's not, again, the subject of today's video. But what I am going to be doing is building um, an engine maintenance set or vehicle maintenance facility, I should say. Um, and the reason for doing that is one, I actually need it. And two, um, I thought with the way things are at the moment, as we all know, you know, this it's, not, it's nothing new, um, that prices for everything skyrocketed and everything. And buying an engine shed, and it's also a demonstration to show that this hobby doesn't necessarily have to be overly expensive. Um, but if you buy resin sheds and stuff like that, they're, they're just, some of them are just really astronomical um, in price and they range substantially. I had originally bought some engine sheds for about, I think, £40 originally, but they've gone hiked up. Um, some are now up to £100, and this is for resin ones. You can also get the card ones. And, and what I'm going to be making is an in-between kind of compromise. But it's not really a compromise because it's actually how I prefer to make my buildings in any case. But it's basically um, between card and plastic card. So the actual foundation of the building will be card and then it will be clad in plastic card. But as we get into the build, I will explain it even more because there are various ways that you can make this building on the cheap but you can also make it even cheaper. Um, but that all depends on you and your own personal tastes and personal preferences as to how far you want to go with it. But we'll explain it as we go along. So what I'm going to do is take you to the affected area, which is just over there, and then we'll explain um, a bit more about what we're going to be doing. Now, I should say that I have made a little start on it. Um, I did manage to go and see Paul the other day, and I managed to get one of these... Um, Pico LK56 inspection pits. Now I am aware that both um, Alan, my good buddy Alan over at Dragon Junction, Mark II, and Charlie over at Chadwick have both um, dabbled with the um, inspection pits. And I think, I don't, I don't know what West Hill Wagon Works call it, to be fair. Um, I know it's about £35 uh, for a double. Um, and you kind of get the base, but I can't remember what it's actually called, to be honest. Um, but I believe it's about £35. So I did actually have a look on their website. However, it doesn't really suit me and my needs. And me being me, there's always other ways. Now, this particular um, kit is very easy to, to, to get hold of. It's a very, um, it's been around for years. It's, it's now Pico LK56 double O gauge inspection pit. And it's very, like I said, it's very easy to put together. The, the hardest bit about it is actually um, taking the jigsaw to the board in order to make the cutting to actually sit the inspection kit into. But like I said, this cost me about £10. 
and um, that's from Paul at my local model shop. So it cost me £10.30 for that. Um, but again, if you're just interested in building the, the engine shed, then so be it. Again, this is an expense you can do without. Um, for me, I wanted to have an inspection pit, so I bought it. But like I said, again, this is all very subjective on what your tastes are and what you, how far you want to go with it. So let's take you over to the effective area and I'll show you the inspection pit already installed and then I can then sort of discuss with you a little bit further the plan of how we're going to build this engine shed. So without giving too much away, this is the um, where I'm planning and proposing to put this engine shed. Now, as you can see, I've actually given you some kind of um, idea of what's been going on because if you see the background, I've actually changed the background with some sky clouds on the back and that's about as much as I'm going to give away on this. And also the fact that I'm actually going to put the vehicle maintenance facility here in this corner. Now, it's quite appropriate that it's going to go next to this engine shed purely because this engine shed is is how the new one is going to be built. It's pretty much identical in terms of how it's going to be built um, because it's the same format in terms of scoring and folding and cutting and using a scalpel. So basically I'm hoping to build the engine shed because it's that much smaller. This was actually built in two, two cards because the A3 card that I used wasn't long enough. And um, so I had to join two sections together. But on, on, on the one that I'm going to be making today is basically a single road engine shed to fit between here and here. So therefore I'll have to take the measurements from there to there and down to here. It's only going to literally fit in one locomotive. Um, and then afterwards build it up from there. So that's, that's where it's going to go. This is it, the Pico inspection kit. Like I said, it's very easy to install. Like I said, the only like, the, the difficulty was it's just actually getting the jigsaw to actually fit it in. But it's now in its place. And you can see there's a point here to see where that comes in from the main line. So this is all new now. So, and then you can also see where I just put some clouds in and that, and that over there. So this is just the general area. It hasn't actually been wired in or anything yet because this is something I'll have to do because I've still got a lot of wiring to do on the layout to get it working. Um, so, but it will be done. This was literally just installed today. So the idea is to basically have one piece of card and the number of folds to fit it in this general area. And we're gonna have a flat piece here, fold up, another fold to go over the roof, another fold to come down the other side, another fold to come from the back wall, and then another fold to go onto the flat base. And hopefully what I'm saying will make sense. And then on the ends, there'll be two flats that come out and then they will fold and tab in to make the building. So hopefully that, oh, yeah, kicking the tripod again. Um, that will make some sense. So that's pretty much where we're going to put it. So let's go and make a start on making a brand new engine shed for the layout or a vehicle maintenance facility, which is VMF. That's what we're going to be making a VMF. So let's get on with it. So here we are back at the bench and I thought I'd show you what we're working towards and a little bit of Tony North Eastern. So the picture we're working towards and something to aim for and in this day and age with the um, with Google and all kinds of stuff on the internet you can really hone in on what you'd like in terms of what you'd like to create um, especially if you're doing modern stuff obviously um, anything historical might be a bit difficult to track, track down pictures and all the rest of it. But anything that you do modern is, is relatively easy to, to sort of source. And I've been quite lucky. Now I managed to find um, one and only picture that I managed to find. And it's not actually of a single road engine shed. It actually is, but it's actually part of a much wider range. So if I just show you what I'm working towards, and this is actually Freightliner Leeds, um, I believe it is. 
but for some reason it's got a 150 DMU in it from Northern, so maybe they contract some work. But this is what we're aiming for, so let me just show you. And hopefully that comes across relatively clearly on the screen. And as you can see, it's got a big number seven on it, so it must be a wider range of, of buildings. But this is essentially a single road engine shed, which is what I'm sort of aiming towards. And as you can see, it's got panelling on it and it's got a relatively shallow roof. And I've managed to do a drawing. And this is what I've come up with. Hello, Tony North Eastern. Um, and this is kind of, as you can see, this is what I've come up with with the measurements here. Um, it's going to be 11 centimetres across, 12 centimetres high. Um, and then I've also made the aperture for the door. And the door has been taken by measurements from the locomotives themselves. Um, so basically just to, I'm going to take you over there and I'll show you how it's going to fit. And that will give you, because for me, I like to visualize what I'm doing, but basically this is how it's going to look on the ends. And then I've also done some measurements um, for, for the sides and the, the base. So those are what I'm going to be going by. So I'll take you over to the um, to the area and show you what I'm going to do. So as you can see, there's a 66 that I've just used um, to get my measurements. It will primarily be for the 66s. However, um, I would strongly recommend using um, your tallest locomotive. And obviously, bear in mind, if you're looking at pantographs, so that way you just make sure you've got all the right clearances. Um, so, I, like I said, I made this image up based on the apex of this roof here, because I want it on, on this one. So it's all pretty much the same. It's essentially the same apex as these roofs. So if I just put this in the middle, you can see that basically it sort of fits in line. And all I've done is just trimmed the ends off. And um, so what that's going to do is that basically it's going to start from here and that's going to sit there and it'll be slightly taller because at the VMF you're going to be, I'm going to have got some jacks so you're going to need to be able to raise the locomotive which is why you need the height in the building. So that is going to start about there and then that will finish over there. So that's where we're going to sort of aim to be. So now what's left to do is to basically transfer all these images onto this, my big piece of card. So it always starts with a big piece of card. So we're going to transfer all the information onto the card and then we'll start scoring it and then hopefully we'll get it right first time and be able to uh, just do it without messing it up. And hopefully if we do it first time correctly, then we should be able to minimize the wastage, minimize the cuts that we've got to do. And hopefully within just one piece of card, we'll be able to fold it all to make a building. So it's kind of like a bit of a flat pack kind of thing. So hopefully it'll be easy to do. So let's get cracking on with that. So I've now transferred the information onto this big piece of card. Now you probably won't be able to see very much of it, but there are a few little dots and it's basically, I don't know if you can see there's two dots there. Basically I've been just putting a few dots where the marks are ready to be marked out properly on the card because that way any mistakes, I don't want to start cutting it prematurely and then I've made some huge mistakes. So I just wanted to just a quick double check to see if it will all fit on the card. And it should all fit on the cards, judging by the, the dots that I've made. So now what I've got to do is just start mapping it out onto the card itself. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. So I've now dissected the card. And just trimmed the end off. Because from here to here is 58 centimetres. And that will allow for the tab. The end the wall, the end and the tab, and then going the other way will be where the, all the walls f f 
form, which is the bottom wall, the roof, and then the side wall, and then the floor as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in the floor first. So the floor is going to be three and a half centimeters on one side. So hopefully this will all kind of work. And eventually we'll get this down to a more manageable That's already the one I've already done. And then hopefully I'll be able to trim this down to a more manageable size. So let's just put the wall the floor in on one side first. Right, so that's the floor. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I, as I do it, it'll, it'll all come clear. Then we need to have 12 centimeters for the wall. So I've now got the measurements done onto this piece of card. So I've trimmed this piece of card right back now, as you can see, it's nowhere near as big as it was. Um, so we've got the bottom floor, which on the far side, which is gonna go alongside the um, engine shed. Then there's the back wall. Then this is the roof section. And then up here is the other wall. And then this is the floor. So basically, hopefully we'll be able to score this and bend this all round in one go without having to make any more cuts. I've just got to do the ends now. And then we should be able to start trimming it down and folding it down to make it into a basic building. So as you can now see, um, I've just managed to transfer all the information that I need. And if I just show you, you probably see it better from this end. This is the bottom piece, one of the floors. That's the wall. This is going to be one of the ends. The other end is over here. And then you've got the roof here. And then as you go further up, you've got the other wall and then the other floor. So now I need to trim off all the excess to give me the right shape. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. And then I'll come back to you once I've trimmed off all the excess. And then hopefully you'll start to have a better idea of how the building's developing. So you can now see, um, I've now trimmed all the fat. And this is the final profile of the card to make the building. And as you can see, I've done the roofs, the sides, I've even put the doors in. So basically this will all start folding in on itself when I start scoring everything. And then hopefully it will sit in the building and fit in the building. So this is the final profile of the building. And hopefully there's no more cutting. It's just all there, ready to go and it's just a matter of folding it in. The only thing I'm gonna do is just trim the corners off the tabs, so when you fold it in, it will glue properly into one building. So that is my next job to do. So you now join me in the final stages. I've now just trimmed off the tabs on the ends and I've trimmed those tabs out, I've cut the holes for the doors, and now it's a matter of me scoring it, and then basically fitting it and see how it fits. And hopefully, we'll have the shell of the building. One score there. Um, this one isn't gonna be quite long enough. So, Another score line there. Another one there. Another 
one for the roof. And then we have side panels. And then finally, the last tab. So, here we go. Let's see how this all goes together now. Start to score it. Oh, there's that one. Right, oh, we can add that one. That's gone. How about the tab? Have the tab. Okay. So we've got that one. And then we got, oh, we got that, yeah, okay. So it's starting to come together now. All right, there's that one. Let's try the other tab. So we've got the roof, now we've got the side wall, yeah, that's it. And then we want the floor. Right, okie dokie, moment of truth time. Does it all fit together? And it does. I mean, obviously it's a bit kind of, um, it needs a bit more rigidity, but it is there. As you can see, there's the shell. So like I said, it needs to be glued in now, but it pretty much is there. And then there's the bottom of it. And then hopefully that will line up with the with the rails over there. So let's go and check that out. Let's go and see how it fits on the actual well I'm, well, I'm planning on putting it. It's pretty much there. And it doesn't matter if there's a few gaps here and there because it will be covered up in whatever you want to cover up in, which is what we'll talk about next. But now it's sitting on here. It is pretty pretty damn good like I said it just needs to be all glued together and then that will be job done right okay so let's take it over to the main to the main area where we're planning on putting this building and see how it looks so here is said building and the proposed area in which we're planning on putting it And it's planning on going there. And we'll just see where it was where the other end is. Like I said, it's still a bit flimsy in the sense of it will need to be um, glued together for it to get the rigidity, but that's pretty much there. As a plain simple car building. It's actually quite imposing, to be honest. Um, but you needed the height because I've got the jacks of the um, Batman jacks. And so you need to be able to raise the locomotive. But as you can see, it just needs to be glued together, really. And stop making it more rigid. But you can see that. That is the basis of the building that, that does actually look quite imposing to be honest but like i said once it's all glued together and everything let's see with it with a 66 inside i 
I suppose just shove it in there for now. Don't need to be. But that looks, that looks pretty good. And I didn't make any mistakes. So the building's all gone together in one piece. So before we move on to the cladding and how we're going to go about tacking that, I just thought I'd show you that I'm going to make a few modifications. One of the modifications I've made already, and that's just to take the, the two bottoms um, out. And the reason for that is so it's easier for me to manipulate the inside and convert the inside without those two flaps getting in the way. But I have still kept them because I'm still going to reuse them. But it's just easier for me to detail the inside with them not here. So I've just taken those off. And the next thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've marked out the roof as well because I'm going to put some skylights into it because there's no actual um, windows on the sides of this building or the front. So it's quite difficult to see what's going on inside. So just to give it a little bit of um, intrigue and to see what's going on inside, I thought I'd put in some skylights at the top, which some buildings I've seen do have it and others don't. So I've decided just to add some skylighting to this to give it some light so you can see what's going on inside. So I'm going to cut those out and then I'll come back to you. So I've now cut out the skylights. So this is our, our building now, as you can see. Got the skylights cut out. And it just needs to be glued up and strengthened up. And as you can see, what I mean by just cutting out the flaps underneath, it gives me work, room to work with underneath to detail it and makes it easier for me to detail the inside now it is worth noting um, just so you know um, the amount of cards that I've been left with from that big piece of card that I originally used just, just gives you an idea of how much card that this building took on its own so I'm left with a couple of these these two two, two pieces like this a really long piece like that and I've also got a huge piece here so and I could still quite easily make another smaller building or something along those lines um, in order to make this building um, you know I can make a smaller building or I could use some of these pieces to strengthen this building which is what I will be doing so this card one piece of card that cost me about three pound thirty and it's enough to make this shell of a building and like I said I'm going to start to um, basically glue it all together and for that um, we have a trusty glue gun for this this little job and that will secure it and glue it virtually instantly and that will just start to give it its rigidity that the building needs so that's what we'll be doing next and then I will probably end up putting some more pieces inside to secure it but we will see how that goes but um, like I said because I want to put lighting in it and everything like that and so before I can do that I need to just basically now secure the building together and just put it together and this like I said this is exactly the same way as I've made the containers um, as you could see you know it's just one piece of card get the initial shape right and then just basically score in it so you're not having got all these joins. I mean, there's no joins really underneath except for two tabs that I've added. So that's what we're going to be doing next is just adding the two tabs. And just run a bead of glue along the seam and that pretty much goes off instantly that is just that's not going anywhere that building is essentially complete and like I said this is all very subjective because you can go as far or as little as you want with this this is very totally subjective it's like, for example, you can make a basic building like this and you don't even put the skylights in it. You know, you could just, and that way you'd save yourself the hassle of doing that. But the thing is, because there's no building anywhere, any, any more windows on the outside, I wanted to give it that intrigue. 
So now we're going to put that to one side for a minute and then we're going to talk about cladding and how we're going to finish the outside of this building and the inside of it. Um, I do intend to put lighting in this so that's something that I'm going to have to bear in mind um, when doing that but that's not the end of the world um, I can still get, a, get around that it's not a problem. So let us see what we're going to be doing and it's nice and straight so that's cool. So let's talk cladding for a moment and how we're going to dress up the outside of this building to make it look a little bit more, more interesting. So there's any kind of, there's number of ways that um, you can do this and I'm going to show you a few examples of that I've used in the past and this is where it becomes, like I said, totally subjective to you. This is where you totally customise the building to suit what you want or to suit your layout on and how you think it's going to look. Um, because at the moment, it's just a plain building, a universal building, which can go, and it's pretty much a modern building, which can go anywhere on the modern day network. But now we want to dress it up. So how do we dress it up? So we can go down, we can go down the paper route which is stuff like, um, let's see, you've got Metcalf, which I've used a lot of. I've used a ton of this stuff, as you've seen on my layout previously. Um, I'm not gonna use that. Um, you can also use super quick papers, which I've used. One of them, as you've seen on the main train care depot, which is, this is super quick paper, brick paper, which you can use. Also from super quick, you've got the the um, grey slates and um, they also do grey engineering brick as well, which you can use. So if that takes your fancy, you can go down that road. Um, I personally like to go down the, the plastic hard route. I think it just looks a bit nicer. Um, my, my, my building over there for the train care depot, I think it's been up there for probably about a year now, maybe more. And it looks nice but it is looking a little bit tired and it might get upgraded to something like this. This is, a, it's very hard to see, but hopefully you can make it out that it's actually brick plastic card. And you get this in A4 sheets. I've used this stuff before at Behringer on my previous layout. Um, actually, my Behringer station, which then became Mildenhall station, that was made out of this plastic card. Um, you can also use stone plastic card, which is that one there. And you can also use, I think, I'm not quite sure what this is, but this is like a, I think this is paneling or corrugated, but it's a very fine one. Um, it's very hard to see. Let's see if I can just get that like that. You might be able to see it. Even I find it difficult myself. I think it is panelling though. Um, but this is quite narrow panelling. And then you've got stuff like um, stone, which I've used. This is like 7mm stone, this is. This is O-gauge stone, but I've used it in the past because stone can be quite thick, can be quite coarse, so it does work on 4mm. Four four but what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using... Ooh. So that might be enough. Well, we'll see. Um, so what I'm going to be using, sorry, my brain went wandering off, is I'm going to be using four millimeter um, spaced um, plank. I think it's what they call it, planking. And this is what I've seen from my photograph that I'm using as reference material. So this is this is how it is. So. As you can see, um, you can't really see too great at the moment, but hopefully you get the gist. Um, but once it's all painted up and everything like that, it will all start to come to life. So that's how I'm going to clad the building for now. I'm going to be using this and I've got three sheets. Now, the reason why I kind of stopped for a moment was because I wasn't too sure whether three sheets was going to be enough to do the whole building. Um, it, so 
it looks like it might be, um, fingers crossed. And basically, these three sheets cost me um, £3.30 each. So for just under a tenner, uh, excuse me, I got three sheets. So 10 plus that, one big sheet. And like I said, I've got all that card still left over. Who knows how much of this card, you know, it can end up being really, really, it's, I mean, when you consider how much um, a resin building will set you back, you can have a really nice personalised building um, just like that, you know, with not too much effort, you know, and it can look really nice and really customisable and unique to your layout. So hopefully these three sheets will be enough to do the outside and the inside. I'm not entirely certain, but we will see how far we would get. I bought three on the off chance, but I wasn't too sure because I wasn't really too sure of the dimensions because originally this building was actually going to be at the same height as the one that's currently there. Um, but then when I looked at it closely and looked at the image, it's the image that I'm using as reference material, it did occur to me that this building would be too low if I left it at the same height. And when I see the proportions of the, of the, the photograph that I'm using, this is actually the right proportion to what um, what I'm modelling or what I'm looking at. So this is definitely, I'm on the right track there. So as you can see, um, cladding is almost complete. It's nearly finished. It's virtually there. There's a few bits that I've left deliberately to show you. Um, I didn't quite have enough um, to do the whole building as such. So I've managed to um, make some joins to, in order to get it to all work, which it will do. And once it's painted, you won't really notice the joins, as long as the joins are perfectly sealed. But I've got one of the skylights covered and I wanted to show you how you go about doing the skylight. And show you just how easy it is to work with this, um, with the plastic card. It's not very difficult at all. Um, so as you can see, there's a couple of bits left to do. There's this bit here, which I haven't glued in yet, although I did want to stay glued. And then there's this bit here. Now, obviously you can see the skylight there. I'll reveal the skylight. So what I'm going to do with that is in order to get the skylight in the right position, just take a bit of masking tape and then you just pop it across there. And you can, all you're doing is just temporarily holding it with the masking tape. That's all you're doing. Because what you want to do is get to the underneath of the building. And as you can see, that skylight is just there. And what you want to do is basically stick your pen in there and run around it to create an outline for you to cut out. So what I do is I press it from the underneath to make sure that I don't push it, push the... Um, plastic card out and then what I do is I just run the pen around the outline of the hole like so so I've now done that you can't really tell but what you can tell is that once I remove the masking tape and you remove that bit of the card you can now see that there is an outline of the window quite clearly and then what you use is a little nail, a nail, nail scissors, they're very small, and you can just basically just protrude into, let me just concentrate a minute, into the plastic, which is very easy. And then basically you just carefully snip away at the line to create your square. Like so. So it's very easy to cut through with a plastic card. And then once that is done, which we're nearly there. You now have your cutout for your window ready to glue into the position and it should line up perfectly with the hole. 
which is just there. Now what I've been using is good old Yoohoo. Yoohoo! And this stuff is great to use on this because basically it doesn't it sets pretty quick but not quick in terms of you still got a few seconds to play with it so you can so if you want to just readjust the position slightly off of your piece you can do and you still got time to do that so it goes off pretty quickly but not so quick that you can't adjust it so you can at least still play about it play about with it so you just run a bead of glue all the way along and along the edges don't worry I've got another Yoohoo on standby I go through so much of it that I actually have boxes of it stockpiled just for when I need it so I don't run out as it so happens I have actually run out of the plastic card and I won't be able to do the inside just yet but that's fine because by the time this video goes out I would have gone to the shop to get some in any case but you can now see that this it's now glued on and that's not going to go anywhere and like I can true glue Peter style I've already got this piece lined up from, from earlier and now you have the basis of your clad building the inside still needs to be done but the outside for all intents and purposes is finished in terms of ready sort of for painting However, I will be adding some more fixtures along here, which is what I'm going to be doing next. But I just thought I'd show you that. Now, a little while ago, I made a little nuclear flask little tub. And I bought and I bought some of this styrene strips. And this is what's left over. And it's ideal to do the edging to make it look nice and finished. So that is what we'll be doing next. And it's quite a lot of this so it should be enough to do a fair bit and then basically you're just going to trim the outsides make it look really really nice and then it hopefully it will work out really nice and then it'll be ready for paint so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to get on with this and then we'll see how we get on I'll show you in a little while so I've now used this um, evergreen plastic strip. That was what I used there. And this is all that's left of it. I had quite a bit of it. And what I've decided to do is to run that all the way around the edges of the building to give it a more finished appearance. And also, if you've got any slightly crooked lines along the edges, it helps disguise that and gives it a more finished look just like with the with the skylights so if you've cut the skylights and they're, they're not quite straight or whatever you can actually use the plastic strips to actually disguise the, the to actually disguise it and make it look really tidy and straight and finished so i've now done that and i've also done it on the other end of the building as well so i've also taken some sandpaper to this and give it a light sand over the edges as you can probably tell you can see the joins there and that will hopefully just blend it blend it all in so when it comes to doing the paint it will cover up any of the joins that you can see here but you won't be able to see it once the, once the paint is on um, i've also sanded the corner edges as well that also helps blend them in so now it's pretty much ready for paint on the outside now i should say that I have actually used um, Tamiya cement um, for doing the strip plastic to plastic. Um, this stuff is absolutely fantastic, highly recommended. Um, it doesn't take long to go off and it goes off pretty damn quick. Um, and it's very, very easy to use. It comes with its own little brush. And all you, and all you just do is just brush it on and then you lay your plastic on top of the plastic. Um, I have used Revell cement, um, which is got like the nozzle, but I really don't like that. I always find it gets clogged up and I always have to keep cleaning it out. And like, so I don't really like that. So this is by far my favorite, which is a Tamiya cement, which I've been using for that. And if we take a brief look at what I'm aiming for, 
which is here. I think you can see that I'm not doing too badly. It's a bit narrower, but overall, the it's the general gist of it is there. And um, that's what I'm going for. I'm not going for an exact replica. I'm just going for something similar. So the paint I'm just going to be using for this is my um, customary Vallejo paint, which I love. I, go for, I, I tend to use Vallejo paints now. I've been converted totally. So I only use Vallejo paints. And I'm using these two. Um, so for the trim... I'm going to be using the US Dark Green 70893, which is that one there. And for the main building, I will be using this kind of light grey, they call it Sky Grey 70.989. So those are the two main colours I'm going to be using. I only need two colours, to be honest. And as you can probably tell, it's going to go into the... Um, freight liner type colors and so this will be a freight liner building um, I could turn it into possibly uh, maybe one of the newer freight liner logos with the orange but again these things are sort of preference uh, personal choice so it's entirely up to you what colors you use what paints you use whether you use oil based or acrylics what colours, it doesn't really matter, that's totally personal choice. Um, but for me, um, I'm going to be using these two paints and basically, essentially make it look very similar to what's in the picture. So, we're going to crack on with that and I'll get back to you with that. So, as you can see now, <clears throat> I've now given it a coat of paint and this is how it's turned out and I'm so pleased with it it's come out really really well um, the green I've given two coats and the grey it's just had one coat and a word on the paint and a word on the on the coverage um, the reason why I've given this one coat and not two is because I wanted to kind of um, just keep some of the undertones of the plastic card of the beige plastic card because it gives it more of a weathered look in my opinion um, but the other thing the other reason for me only giving this one coat on the grey is because I didn't want to lose the definition on the actual panelling of the plastic card and hopefully you can see the definition of the panelling and if you go too thick with the paint, there is a chance that you might go over the grooves and go over the lines and basically um, cover some of the detail on the panelling, which is another reason why I went for only one coat. Um, it does good, give, give good coverage to do the Vallejo paint, so I do recommend them. And the other thing is also when you're brushing, because I actually brushed this, I didn't, I didn't spray it, um, I just literally just paint brushed it on. And basically, I used downward strokes all the way across and followed the, the funnel, followed the direction of the panelling. Um, if you paint it across, then again, there might be a chance that you see the brush strokes going across, which wouldn't look too good. But like I said, I've brushed downwards and followed the lines of the panelling. So that's kind of my tip. Now we can sort of move on to the inside. And I have sort of made a start on the inside, but this is how I've left it. Now, again, you can go as, as little as or as far as you want with this. Um, what I intend to do is these two tabs that you can see is to cover these two tabs up. So it looks like the other side where it hasn't got no tabs. So you can't actually see it. And then that gives it a much more neater finish. So I'm going to show you. So even if you choose not, because I'm going to put lighting in this. But even if you choose not to put lighting on this, um, you can still cover this up. And I'll show you how to do that. So my next job is to work out the direction of my lighting, how I'm going to route the wiring, and where I'm going to put the lights, and how I'm going to do that, and how many am I going to need. Now I've made a little bit of a start on it. If I show you at the front, you can see there's like a, almost like a little pinhole. Um, that's I actually drilled a 3mm hole but I actually really needed two 
but I'll put a bit of glue on it and also the backing will support that support the LED anyway so there's, one, there's a little hole there on one end and there's a hole on the number two end as well I've actually marked it that one has a number two end the reason for this is that there's a slight discrepancy between the two ends um, nothing major but it's just what it does it's just to make sure you get a perfect fit for the order components and what I've done is I've made a start on it and if I show you uh, most the LED here's so here's one of the LEDs that I'm using and I, I, I've sort of bent it across but the thing being is um, this has actually got kind of like a square edge to it so if you do get a um, LED um, if you get one that's basically just a round edge uh, sorry round all the way then it will actually go in better but I don't have any of those so it's got this kind of like this square protrusion but it does actually help it from going all the way through because you've kind of got this um, this bit sort of sticks up and then after it kind of stops at that point so I'll just poke it in through the for the hole so I can show so I can show you what I mean so I don't know if you can see it but there's the LED there and I'm already sort of planning the route uh, let me see if I can show it to you like that I don't know if it can come across hopefully you can see it but the um, the wiring the, the the legs go up towards the roof so what's going to happen is it's going to go up the wiring's going to go up through there join so I join the rest of the wiring and the lighting which will run across there and then there'll be another LED at the other end and then the wiring the main the out of the wiring will be on the on the side where it's got the tabs uh, let me see that way here you go on the, on the side that's got the tabs because then I can hide it within this bit and conceal it and put another false wall on top, on top of it so you won't see it and then all you'll see is just the wiring coming down I'm sorry if it's a bit difficult to explain but you'll see it as I go along as I do it now what I've done is I've kind of made a start on it and what I've done is I've got six pieces here one for the number one end and one set for the number two end now I think I've made a slight modification on my my original plan but this we've got this one here and this is for the number two end and basically that in the middle is a channel so the LED will sit at the bottom and then the wiring will thread through the top and this will become a guide and then you'll have the back piece which then goes at the, behind it and this will form the inner wall so this will be the inner wall and that will basically then hide the wiring behind on this second piece if you see what I mean so like I said I'll show it to you as I go along but I did actually cut two pieces because of the depth of the LED but because I'm, I'm now considering today what I have decided to do is I bought today some Velcro and the reason for buying some Velcro is that what I'm planning on doing now is making the walls detachable so that if there's any problems with the lighting or if the solder comes desoldered and one of the LEDs goes out for any reason then I can at least remove the panels without damaging the building because the problem is I'm going to try and encase the wiring within the building and if I just glue it and conceal it behind the walls then I won't be able to get to the wiring unless I damage the building so what I'm going to do is use a bit of velcro to put it on the panels and then I can just basically unstick the panels and get to the wiring behind if I need to for any reason so that's the plan what I've also done is I've made an inner wall sorry in a ceiling I should say and that is made to the correct length of this and it will sit inside here I'm not sure if this is the right way around it is um, no actually I'm not sure if it is I have to check I think it's the other way around 
yeah it's the other way around and you can see that that sits and that forms in and basically what's going to be what's going to happen is is that this ceiling here this false ceiling is going to hide the wiring that's between at the back and you'll just have the lights just poking through so again i'll show you that as i do it and the wiring i'm going to be using the, the lighting i'm going to be using for this is my old tried and chested um, Christmas tree lighting, which I bought from, from Poundland all them years ago. Um, this must be about nearly 10 years old, but it still works very remarkably remarkably well. I have actually tested it um, with a battery pack, so I do know it does work. So now it's a case of just wiring the LEDs and getting it all um, sort of fed through. So I'll show you how I do that. So I'm just going to get this all wired up and then we'll come back as I show you how I'm going to install it. So here you can see um, a mock-up of the lighting system that I'm just going to be doing. It's just a quick little mock-up to see how it all fits. And you've got an LED here an LED here and a string of little lights over there and just to show that it all works I'm just going to dim the lights down a little bit and then we will have a look see I'll just get this down to a bit more that's it so hopefully now when the, when I plug this in I'm just using a battery pack. You can see it all works. So we're now happy with that. And now it's a case of just actually um, getting the route set up and concealing it within the ceiling and within the walls. And like I said, what I'll do is I'll come back to you um, once I've done a bit of that. So I've now sort of put the lighting in the conceal, as you can see, in the false ceiling. And I just wanted to show you on this side. Oops, my light show. Let me not show you that. You can see where the wiring is down the middle there. And on the other side, what I've done to try and conceal the wiring by using those extra pieces that I showed you earlier. So basically by using the channels that I've done here, I threaded the wiring directly through the middle and up into the ceiling. And then I've then put in this back piece here and that hides, that hides the wiring totally. And then basically what will happen then is that I can then clad this and you won't even know there's wiring behind there. And it's the same with this, you I'll clad this in the same way as the front. And basically I've now also wired this so it's going to run down the side. It's going to run down the side of where the tabs are. And then I will conceal this wiring in the same way I've concealed this wiring by putting a piece of card here. And then another piece of card on top to conceal the tabs and conceal the wiring. So that'll be my, my next thing to do. But what I do need to do is put the skylights in before I can do anything else as well, because obviously um, I can't actually do the fitting of the ceiling until I've done the skylights. But I'm going to fit those directly to the ceiling. So if I just take, take those pieces out and then take the ceiling out, you will see what I've actually what I've actually done. As you can see you've got the bare building now again. So I've just mounted it to the false ceiling with some electrical tape and then that will just drop in and plug in. So that's all one unit. So if I put some velcro on the back of this and if I need to sort out any other wiring I could just drop the ceiling down and take this whole panel out and then work on it and it's all totally self-contained on the ceiling part so that's what i'm going to end up doing so if i just show you the bottom there 
I'm going to attach the, um, the skylights directly to this and what I'm going to be using for that is actually this Pico line side packaging and that will work out nicely so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing next I'll show you as I get further along So what you can now see is that I've now mounted the lights and fitted them properly and they just lie across the top there and if I take the ceiling out you'll see I've also mounted the skylights and there is the skylights as you can see so what I've done is I've just used the Pico packaging like I said and fitted it directly to the ceiling and as you see it's all nicely fitted so now the next thing to do is going to start fitting out and cladding the um, rest of the building before painting so as you can see um, I've now cladded the building and it's near enough ready and I've done the framing but I've left this one I've left this one undone. The reason being is I wanted to kind of show you that you can straighten out some of these windows even if they're not quite straight. So if you cut the hole slightly not quite straight or slightly wonky, you can use the plastic the plastic card to give the frame it and to straighten out the windows. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, now I'll show you how I do it. Now I did use evergreen plaster strut um, and I think I showed you the packaging for that but, but you can also use this, this is the same width and this is by plaster strut rather than evergreen so if you can't get evergreen you can use the plaster strut strips and this is what this one is and basically what I do is it can be a bit more tricky because I'm doing it towards the camera but you just sort of line the strip up against here and then I draw a line across and then that will give me the length and I'm not specifically measuring this or anything like that and then what I do is I've got this Tamiya cement which is what I use I think it's the best thing to use. Run it along the edge. And then stick it on. And then what you do is you slightly overlay the aperture that you've cut. And basically that straightens out the window. So don't put it right on the line, but just slightly overlap it. And then basically that gives you um, a better finish as it were so as you can see this is the ceiling hatch so I'll just carry on with this I usually do the sides first so I measure up the side with the other side Have a little bead along the edge, and you do have a little, little bit of time not a huge amount, but a little bit of time to play with the Tamiya cement. And then, what you do then for the ends, you just line up one end up against the other. Hopefully you can see that. And then that just slides over there. Now if you wanted to, you could mitre these corners, but once the paint is on, you're not really going to see that. 
like I said, this is on the ceiling in any case. But that's if you go down this route. Like I said, this is all very subjective. This is just what I'm doing. You, know, you don't have to do any of this. If you don't want to fit skylights, you don't have to fit skylights or anything like that. It's just that because the building, there isn't much light going into the building as it is from the original building. You can't really see much what's going on inside, which can be good for some people because you could just make just a simple basic building and not have to do anything with the inside. But I kind of, to me, it just seems a bit pointless and I just wanted to make, so you, so you can actually see what's going on in the inside and actually what it's about. So now that's that, so that's framed as well. So now that's all just ready for painting in the Vallejo. So here you can now see um, a list of component parts and the, and the building itself. So this has all been painted up now and ready to go and ready to be fitted. Um, I do have some Velcro which I've bought um, to be able to install some of these panels. So I'm just going to have a test fit. As you can see, you've got the two ends. You've got the lighting ceiling, the full ceiling. And here you've got one of the side walls. So the other side wall has already been installed on the inside of the building because on this because on this side I didn't need to do any work to the building at all um, <clears throat> because this building this this wall here didn't have any um, tabs or anything on, on, on it so I can glue the plastic card straight direct to the actual building so you'll get extra strength from the ends and the top here but the building's very sturdy as it is in any case but like I said, that wall has already been fitted. Now, in case any of you are wondering what the yellow is on the end, that just represents the shutters. So it looks like the shutter is hasn't been put all the way up. So you can sort of see. So that's what the two ends, two yellow ends are about. So that's just to represent the shutters. So now it's a case of like test fitting um, some of these pieces and seeing how how they get on. So this bit is kind of like the scary bit, as it were, because I now need to test fit this all together and see how it works. So the one thing I should mention as well that I didn't actually mention is um, I did actually put the other piece in here, another, and that's kind of you can see the tab there and the original tab there. But I'm now putting another piece of card here, and you can see that that levels out that tab. But there's actually a channel here, and that channel will actually um, take the wiring to feed the wiring down through the side of the building so I should actually mention that I'd actually forgotten to mention that so that channel's been cut open as well so there's a channel there and there's a channel on the two ends and that takes all the wiring and blends it into the building right so let's see how we get on and see if we because we might need to do some trimming um, it all depends really. So this is the side where the channel is. So from that point of view. It is a bit tight, but that's good. Because that's the only thing I really want to do now. Is just before I carry on, as you can see the ceiling's in. Okay, so after a bit of fettling. Um, I've managed to get this all to fit properly. Um, I just needed to trim the ends down um, because obviously adding the extra um, plastic card has, has kind of shrinked um, the dimensions a little bit. And so I just had to just basically just trim the ends off, which isn't a big deal because I just used a pair of scissors. So it's not the end of the world. The other thing I've done is, as you can see, I've got some electrical tape here. And basically, I've secured the two LEDs um, with electrical tape on the ends here so they don't pop out. And then basically, I've also done the same for um, actually along here for the channel along here where the wiring comes out so that doesn't pop out. So before I start thinking about Velcroing this in, 
I just wanted to just check to see um, the rest of the fit because that now fits in as it should do in there and that should just slide in there now so the last part of this is as you can see I've added some velcro only on one end and that's just to pin it in place to pin the ends in place the ends. and the thing is the reason for using velcro and not just gluing it straight on is that basically if there's a problem with this wiring at any point I can just remove the ends and remove this sidewall and be able to lift the whole thing out and actually sort out the wiring without damaging the building because obviously all the wiring is now concealed within the walls so I need to be able to have access to the wiring in case there's any problem with the lighting without damaging the building so that's why I've just velcroed it on one end and then the wall on this side should hopefully hold it all together and all it is, is, is a case of just um, popping it in, but it is quite, at the moment it's very, very sticky because it's brand new, but the, the best way to do it is to put the ends right in first and then attach it, um, but it does work, it does do the job and it will hold it in place, and like I said, it conceals the wiring without with the wall still being removable and you've got this one here on this side wall here so if you just pop that just at an angle first all the way in and then butt it up to the velcro and that should hopefully just still hold that in place now there's a bit of play in this wall but that's because this wall here will then sort of hold it all together and then that will prevent it from moving out. And I have actually test fitted it again. Um, like I said, that won't go out anywhere. That won't go anywhere. So that's now safely secured. And the building is now done. And like I said, you can see that it's got the channeling down the side. So that is ready to be planted on the layout, really. And what I'll do is I will quickly show you a demonstration of the light so you can see it. So as you can see, the lights are on. Um, it probably doesn't come show very well on this light. But you can see that, I mean, this is only running off a 3 volt battery, so the batteries aren't exactly the best because they've been around, but it's just to test it. But you can see that two ends are working and that the three lights inside are working as well and that the channeling has just gone through the side of the building you can't see any once you, you thread the wiring through the side into the baseboard and you won't see any any of the wiring at all it's all concealed and if I need to remove any of this to get to the wiring for any problems with the, the lighting I can just remove it all because it's just velcroed in and it's not glued in and now you've got a modern traction building and now all that's really left to do is just do a bit of signage really and um, and you're pretty much there and done so yeah let's get on with the signage So hello everyone and a welcome back to the final part of this rather long Susanna's Come Build With Me. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to be but my apologies if it's a, if it's about an hour or just over. Um, however, um, hopefully you'll understand why it is that length of time and hopefully it's whisked by and it hasn't been too sort of boring and I hope you found it interesting. So now it's time to sort of get to show you um, the final reveal really of what I've done so here we go I've now done um, a number of things which I just, oh, let me just switch the light on just to give you a better idea um, right so here it is it's now got the freight liner signage on the side freight liner signage on the front um, I've now added a door 
and um, let me tell you what happened with the door. I wasn't going to put a door in at first, and then I really because because the building's quite narrow. Ideally, if I had um, more space, I would have actually made the building slightly wider. The height is perfectly fine. It's definitely in scale, um, but the building could have done with being a little bit wider so there's a bit more space inside for the workers to work in. But this is the space constraints that I have, but I really do like it. And in fact, the Backman um, single road engine shed is about the same dimensions. Um, and what I did is I didn't actually put the door in at first and then I sort of decided I would put the door in. And what I did is really what I should have done at the, at the very beginning on the plan when it was laid flat on the sheet, I should have had the door marked on there and I should have cut it out then. However, that being said, um, I did use a trick from John Warner from many years ago um, about using self-adhesive labels and I've got this Sainsbury's pack of self-adhesive labels and it's just one of these strips and then basically I painted one of these self-adhesive labels in the green and then I stuck it to the outside of the building like so and then I've just sealed it in and then with another little bit of plastic card just to do the little lintel on the top isn't it's the same for underneath and inside there's a door on inside so you can get in it's all done the lighting's concealed everything's concealed and you've got the skylights and it's all pretty much done and dusted with all the labeling so needless to say um, I'm glad it's done it's taken me about a week on and off a few hours sort of one day and then another hour the next day and so it's taken me a few hours to get through it all um, I'm really pleased with the results I think it looks absolutely superb and ace I'm really pleased with it and I just wanted to share this with you because it's not a particularly hard build it's just it just can be quite time consuming um, but I do find that this way is better um, word on the costings um, this building has probably cost me approximately about £30 or so to build um, with the signage and with the um, other bits and pieces because uh, like the paint, the plastic card. Um, like I said, this building is totally subjective. So when you, when I did the original plan on the A4 sheet, if you choose to make it and you just get the final sort of card base, then it's totally subjective whether you want to then, um, I would just score the lines directly onto the card instead of buying the plastic card, which would save you quite a bit of money. Or if you wanted to just buy super quick paper card, uh, sorry, super quick paper. And again, that would be cheaper. Um, and so it's all these little things that you can negotiate on the price. So, but this particular build with the plastic card, with the lighting, with the wiring, with the signage, has cost me about £30 or so. And the other thing I didn't show you is that I also did the um, sort of insides to tidy up the inside so you don't see the layers. So I put this bit of card in and painted it up and that gives it a bit of depth as well and a bit of relief. Um, and finally, a word on the signage. Um, the signage has once again come from um, Eagle One Signs over at eBay. Um, I think I believe it's Eagle One Signs. And he's done he's done so many signs for me. I've said this in the past and I'll show it to you again. Um, I've literally got so many so much signage that I've got from him and I will continue to use him because he does great signage and you know it, he's very very helpful. And like I said, I've got the Southwest Trains, Milden Hall stuff that he's done for me, the Behringer stuff he's done for me next southeast. He's done for me speed signs. Um, he's done for me the Goswell sidings. He's also done for me Milden Hall station signage. Um, he's done for me the Bordillon Gardens when I had that in the corner. He did that for me. And not to mention the fact that he's done the Volma container terminal. And he's now done also Milden Hall traction maintenance depot. So that's also going to be going over there when I set up the scene. And he'd also done these big pieces as well, these big freight liner ones that would go on the side of the shed. 
So I actually love his work and I always go back to him for everything I do, for any signage, because I always think his signage is, is really authentic. I love the customer service. He gets it to me pretty quickly. And like I said, it's, it's just cracking stuff that he uses. It really is. I, I highly recommend him. Like I said, and if you, if you see something that he's got that maybe isn't quite right, if you just message him and sort of say, do you know if you can do this for me? He'll get back to you and inadvertently he has helped me out in the past. On a final note, before we take a final push to put this on the layout over in the corner so you can see where it's going to go, um, I'm just going to give you a brief glimpse of what's going to be going on over the other side and I think hopefully you'll be impressed. So I went to my local printers a little while ago, Wildly Upbeat Printers is what she's called. Um, and what she did was she um, basically I showed her, where is it? I know there's one on the layout, but I don't really fancy going there, but I was just gonna sort of see. <laughs> that would be the last one. So a long time ago, as you know, um, like I said, I did get this signage from Eagle Mop One Model Signs. And the one that you're noticing is this one on the bottom here. And basically, I want to get I wanted to get an enlargement. Um, I have to put on the valance on the main layout, which you haven't seen yet. And she's kindly done me an absolute fabulous job on a banner, which looks absolutely amazing. I haven't put it on. I've got three of them, but I'm only needing one. But that's mainly because in case I kind of make a mistake kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to see if I could just show you just one of them. Right, that's I think that's one of them. You ready for this? This is this is ace. <laughs> I can't wait to stick it on. <laughs> Doesn't that look superb? <laughs> uh, I'm just so pleased. Um I I, I just took it over to her and I said I, I asked her, you know, what's the chances of me getting um, of you being able to enlarge this for me and and she said you know have you got a and I, like I said I took that little thing with me and she sort of said well it's going to be it's not going to be too the quality of the paper is good on the paper it's really high quality on the paper but when it comes to enlarging it it's not going to be it's going to be a bit too it's going to be a bit too fuzzy but she said leave it with me and I'll get back to you. So I left her my, my details and she went off and she got back to me and said to me, look, basically this is what I've done. What do you think? And she sent me a PDF first of it and sort of said to me, right, um, is this what you, is this what you're after? And I said, yes. So, so it was what I after. So she basically said, okay, fine, I'll get on and do it. And she's gone ahead and once I gave her the go ahead, she's printed this off and now it's ready to go on the valance. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. I'm really excited about that. And again, it's just another little freight liner, a little bit. Um, so yeah, so now what I'm gonna do for the final part, I'd like to say thank you for everybody who've um, watched my video. I'd like to also, um, excuse me. I'd like to thank a number of subscribers. We've got a new subscribers coming on board. Uh, my subscribership has gone up um, recently, so I'd like to thank everybody new and old for joining me. Um, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this layout. And I'd also like to thank a number of people who have contacted me and asked about who I, um, who, how I was, um, because um, obviously there was a recent video that went up recently, which cause some controversy and um so i'll say no more on it but i'm not sure whether that sort of can uh, but like i said I've, I've got i've had some wonderful people just contact me just to see how i'm doing and see if i'm okay because i hadn't put anything up for a while and so i just want to say i am okay it's not a problem um and i am still doing anything i'm still doing videos so it's not a problem 
Um, the only thing I wanted to say is that the next video, believe it or not, is going to be the Christmas video. Um, that will be the next video. Um, I know it seems like quite a way to go, but it's going to be like a Christmas special reveal. Kind of hopefully everything will be finally tied up and done and I'll have everything I need. Um, and everything will be here. So that will be the next video. Um, so it is going to be quite a while, while, but it's going to give me some time to get the things finalised that still have, need to be done on the, on the other side. So this is literally going to be October I started this, the big renovation, and it's gone through, we were like already midway through November. So hopefully by the end, by Christmas, it should all be finished. Um, like I said, a huge amount's been done. So um, anyway, let's put this building over there, quickly show you to it over there, and then that will end. This Susanna's Come Build With Me, on building a traction maintenance depot or VMF, a vehicle maintenance facility, whichever one you want to use. So I'll see you over there shortly before we say our goodbyes. So as you can see here, just before I put the building on, I just wanted to, this is the base of the building that I originally had planned for. And what I've done is I've just used a concrete paint and just a yellow outline around the sides. I haven't glued it or stuck it because I haven't finalized everything. Um, these are the Backman jacks, so I'm going to use these in the building. And I've also got some other bits and pieces coming. And also Gary had previously given me some um, tool cabinets, which will also go in here. And I've also got some workers to go on here. But I just wanted to quickly show you the base, for what I've done and whereabouts it's going to go. So here is said building in um, its position. And... Um, I'm just gonna to have to realign this track slightly to stop it from getting a bit too close. It's actually come out a bit too much than what I'd anticipated. So I'm gonna to have to move the track slightly, but it's pretty much in its final position. And um, I'm just gonna show it to you um, in the dark so you can have a look at it. So here is said building in the dark and um, fully lit. I haven't actually, it's still connected to the three volt batteries and double A's. So it isn't actually connected to the main circuit yet because it's not wired in yet, but it just gives you a rough idea of what we're looking at. And if I just sort of, hopefully you'll get a gist of what's going on inside. I don't know if you can, but I think you can get a rough idea of how it looks inside. And I think it gives the right amount of light without it being too much. So I'm really, really, really pleased with it. So that concludes the end of this video. And this Susanna's Come Build With Me. So thank you so much for watching. And if you made it through to the end, well done. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it interesting. And hopefully, <clears throat> also, it may encourage you and inspire you to build your own. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And I will get back to you and um, I will help as best as I can. So until the next time, it's goodbye from me at Susanna's Come Build With Me and Mildenhall and Districts. Bye for now.